wrap off the day. Try fish. So here's the red October tube. So this is the tube right here. You guys see me pull out of the net on the intro. I actually have it broke down because I want to show you guys how I rig these. But that being said, Dave and I do a ton of underwater footage. You guys see it all over the channel. And in most cases, one of us is in the water holding the GoPro, moving it as the bait goes by. And GoPros are notorious for picking up those little micro noises that the case or the shell of the GoPro picks up. And the video where you see the white and green tube go by and it's it's almost making a suction noise. That's the first time I put two GoPros basically, you know, back to back underneath my dock and I pulled the bait by them on a stationary camera. So it's not picking up so much of that movement in the water. And we didn't really expect to hear that kind of suction noise. And granted, we had a blade on the back of that tube similar to this well this one's actually got a bell it would be more similar to this just a little colorado blade on the back that's going to make some noise in the water but it's certainly not making that that swooshing suction noise that you hear i've often wondered what the secret of a red october tube was when we first got them years ago i looked at them and i was just like they're just almost look like the most uninspiring type of musky bait you could use and we didn't use them very much. We actually really like the boo tubes with the flash on the back because in the water, they look like they do more. And to the angler, you want to think that your bait's doing more. But since I started using just the regular 10 inch monster tubes like this and started having success, I knew there was something going on there and I just couldn't quite put my finger on it. I did a bit of research and in the bass world, guys talk about tubes and the hydrodynamics i'm not smart enough to know exactly how that works but i do know that a hollow bait like a tube or a shadzilla and there's a few other styles that are are pretty much well hollow in the water the water pressure is going to move on there and i slow our tube video down by 20 percent and i did mess with the audio a bit and I bumped up the audio about 5 dB and I put a compressor on it just to try and get you know the noise or the sound of it a little bit more prominent so let's listen to that and I think you guys will hear that same kind of swooshing or suction noise again it's there's a combination of the blade on the back and that that swooshing or suction noise in there that I think is key to a tube Is that the be all end all of the tube? Is that, you know, that kind of suction or squishing in the water? Certainly the water pressure and the movement in the water has to, you know, play a role on how the tube reacts to the water and the environment around it. And no doubt that when you pull it through the water, it's going to create a little bit of a suction just in that hollow back of the tube. So it was really interesting for us to hear that in a video and it got us thinking that moving forward we're gonna have to do some stuff where we get a camera stationary underwater when we're trying to capture you know the pure audio of a bait again depending on what style of bait it is a suic it's not going to make any noise you know dive and rise like that but if you're doing a bucktail or a spinner bait or you know tubes or even now i'm thinking we need to do that with some of the swim baits and see you know how much we actually hear with it but I think that that is probably part of, you know, that secret of a tube. It's just, it's making that very natural kind of squishing or suction or movement sound through the water that, you know, a fish or a bait fish probably makes. So it was just, it was really interesting for us to capture that. So towards the end of this video, Dave and I had an opportunity to get 
basically all the sizes of tubes. Not all the configurations of the harness, but we had a 7-inch Ninja, the 10-inch Monster, the 12-inch Big Sexy, both sizes of the twisted tube. We didn't do the boo tubes because it's kind of redundant, you know, kind of how they look in the water. But I'm going to include those clips at the end and a little bit of a disclaimer. We're in pretty shallow water, so it's hard to do a lot with a tube. And it's more or less just to show you guys kind of how they look. But for now, I want to talk about how we rig them because we get a lot of questions on how we rig our tubes and what we do. And coming off the back of the uh, Musky Hunks podcast that I did a few months back where we talked about rigging them and modifying them, I did get a, a bunch of questions about that. So let's kind of talk about how I like to rig the tubes. Okay, let's talk about how we rig. We'll start with the 10-inch monster because it's the most popular tube size so i don't have a regular tube rig because i modify every single one <clears throat> but here is a modified tube rig right there and what i do the conventional rig from this is a mid weight or mid depth and it comes with a wire that's a little bit longer and the treble sits kind of in between those two i like to add a treble in here and these are the little bells off of ice fishing rods that you can clip on. I like to add one or two of those in there. They just make a little bit of noise. And this middle hook, I want it to sit just behind the body of the tube. So right as the tentacles start. So in most cases, that means on this hook right here, two split rings together, shrink wrapped goes over that single hook right there. And then I also add a short piece of wire that goes to this back hook. And I pre-make these wires and they're approximately, let's have a look here. Three and a half inches long is how I pre-make them. And what that does is it gets attached on the split ring here, goes back to my back hook. And then on my back hook, I add a chunk of wire that goes to a swivel to a blade at the back. And the difference there is that I can get that blade to be right in line. This is the blade attachment that you can get from Red October. It comes in a package like that. And what I don't like about that is that that's designed to just go over one point of a treble and it always hangs a little bit off center like that and to me it seems to unbalance the bait so I like to put it right in line and then that way it tracks very true and it doesn't really matter what style of blade you put on these are Colorado's and here's one with a willow and same deal that's set up exactly the same and then on this one here slightly different this hooks just a little bit further back and i have a drop tine bell attachment on there but other than that that's how i set them up and on some of them i like to add the magnet from musky innovations and water wolf up in canada has them as well that keeps that bottom hook hanging nice and tight on the bait very compact and with the trebles in there the hookup percentage is really high I know I'm going to get some questions about this, so I will set this down and I'll take a little bit of a video with tape measure out beside it so you guys can kind of figure it out for your own approximately, you know, what the dimensions and the dimensions of this little piece I make. And that's basically how we do the 10 inch monster tubes. The shallow running 10 inch basically do it exactly the same. It's a little bit more work to add this middle treble. You have to attach a split ring to the little hook hanger that hangs out the bottom. And again, then I just add a bell inside there. And then I like to put that little blade on the back. And the reason I don't put a second hook on that bottom hook hanger is they have a tendency to swing around and get caught on one another. Having this in line here... And again, this one has a magnet there. But if a fish were to grab that just basically right like that, 
it may not even get that front treble at all, no matter how hard you set the hook. Having this treble in the middle here, you got a really good chance of getting a solid hook set because a lot of times with a rubber bait, you can't pull that bait through the fish's mouth enough. It's almost like setting on a sucker rig. So having that extra treble in there really helps. So essentially the same idea, guys, on the shallow rig right there. Moving up to the 12-inch Big Sexy. Again, set it up virtually identical I like to get that treble in the just behind the body of the tube so your length is going to be a little bit different on that mid piece that we put in there and then again getting that back treble so it's right around the end of the tentacles or just inside of it and again that one's got a drop tine bell on it and I think in actually in the video I'll see if I can isolate it here you can actually hear this bell kind of rattling as the bait goes by. This is the one that we used in the underwater video. So this is the seven inch Ninja. Usually don't do a lot with these. Pretty well use them basically, you know, right out of the gate. This one, I did move this hook up just a little bit tighter. I got a bell on this one and then we got dual blades out the back. So basically think um, Bondi Royal Orba thing I like about the 7-inch Ninjas is they really dart around more than any of the other tubes. They're very erratic. So areas where you can get away with that super erratic motion of a tube and not you know worried about hitting timber or rocks or something, they can be super effective. And it, it's probably one of the most you know underutilized of all the tubes. And it's one that I know next year we got to start using a little bit more, especially earlier in the year when you know fish are scattered some are deep some are shallow and you want to try and cover water very erratic bait and one that like i say we're going to use more and unfortunately our underwater video we didn't get great footage of this one so it's another one that next year we'll try and do you know a little bit more with it to see if we can get you guys some better footage but definitely like the little ninja and there's a few things you can do with it and again same idea as what we're doing there guys we are trying to get some deeper water to show you our favorite red October tubes. I got the little seven inch Ninja here. I got a 10 inch monster. We got the 12 inch big sexy and then a couple sizes of twisted. We can't do all the weights of harnesses because we're just shallow here. So we're gonna see how this works, but at least we wanna show you guys how we kind of pop them and how we kind of work them. All right, guys, this is a 10 inch monster. This is rigged essentially how I like to rig it. All right, here's a 12 inch big sexy tube rigged with a little drop tine bell. All right, here's the smaller of the twisted tubes. I got it rigged up with a second treble in the back. We'll see how this one looks. Black Widow with that red hook. All right, guys, here it is. This is the bigger of the twisted tubes. This one in white. Again, I got it rigged with an extra treble in there. The 10 inch monster was bait of the year by a long shot for us last year. And check out the video right here where we talk about our five best baits from 2023. And we highlight the tube again. 
And it's not to say that the twisted tube doesn't work because it certainly works. But if I had to pick one from Red October, it's going to be the 10 inch monster all day long. And for now, 54 buses out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.